Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody is enjoying uh, life. Hope everybody's happy and healthy. And hopefully you guys are doing some pretty good things advancing uh, in your career, which is the most important part for any uh, industry. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much. Take a second. All we ask is take a second to like uh, the video. If you like the concept of uh, unbiased technical analysis, um, all we ask is for a like, share, subscribe, and share, you know, share some details of your journey. I think uh, most traders would uh, definitely benefit from uh, another trader's uh, point of view. If you are uh, interested in pivots or curious, have been kind of watching this broadcast for a while or following us on social media. Again, there's 30 days, uh, kick the tires, get behind the wheel. Uh, I would love to expose you to the wonderful world of pivots. You'll quickly see in, in the first you know week and a half or so, if this is a right fit for you, there, there are pretty, pretty cool. And it's definitely an alternative from the quote unquote uh, normal. So again, there is a link below uh, and you guys can uh, try it out. So let's talk about the tape, right? Market continues to go higher. Nothing new, uh, nothing uh, really earth shattering is going to be ab about this broadcast. Uh, nothing has materialistically changed. Uh, earnings season is just kind of moving along. Uh, the majority of high beta mega cap technology names have reported pretty darn good uh, earnings. The reaction to those earnings, even if they initially uh, Miss price action have been absolutely stellar. Uh, we'll get to one that's that's a little bit interesting, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, as you can see by uh, the closing bell, this is the first close on the SPX over 5,000, right? Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people thought, well, at 5,000 should get rejected. I really wasn't one of them. I really don't pay that much attention to the indexes as far as um, mental areas of interest. I, I really don't buy into that, but a lot of people uh, have been shorting this market on the way up, have been shorting this market uh, on the way up in 2023. And these are the same people in 2022, they were buying dips. So uh, again, at some point, you have to realize one thing, the trend is your friend, right? It's just as simple as that. The trend is your friend. Don't try to pick tops. Don't try to pick, uh, you know, bottoms, um, I think eventually, just because of my, you know, just because of my experience in rabbit bull markets, we know how this is going to end eventually. We know, right? I, it already ended uh, tragically for most of us who traded during the dot com era. It traded, it, it ended really, really bad for all you guys who started in 2020, 2021. That 2022 bear market was ridiculous if you didn't know how to trade both sides of the market. So this eventually is going to end. What when is going to end? I don't know. I really don't care. Okay, I really, really don't care. Enjoy this, right? Enjoy this now because if this market ever turns, yeah, I'm comfortable on both sides of the market. Uh, 2023, uh, 2022 was a great year. Uh, the market was beyond, uh, beyond selling. That's beyond. The, that's the way to describe it. Um, it was 85 percent, 90 percent of the time. Uh, underneath supply and just tremendous action to the downside. But for all you guys who are sitting there and sipping the Kool-Aid and thinking, you know, you're doing something right, you're not doing anything right. I'm not doing anything right. The market's making this right, okay? Just the same way it did it during dot-com. It's the same way they did during the 2020 pandemic rally. The market is just exaggerated. It's just exaggerated to the point of insanity, right? But it is, is exaggerated. And I've, I've learned one thing through my career very, very quickly because I made a lot of mistakes uh, in the first 10, 15 years. And that is the market's never as good as you think and it's never as bad as you think. Eventually, uh, things kind of even out and it becomes even keeled. But enjoy this, right? Enjoy this because uh, eventually the market will turn and it's going to give us an incredible, an absolute uh, epic backside trade. But it's not going to be tomorrow. Well, definitely not going to be tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, the way the markets usually blow off the top, just to give you a kind of a, a, a little bit of synopsis through my experience, it doesn't happen on one day. It's usually something called a rounding top 
and you start seeing a lot of exhaustion cycles, not necessarily pulls, but you start seeing a lot of exhaustion channels and usually the rounding top usually lasts for about four, five, six days. And then finally, uh, they pull the plug when, when there's just absolutely no more juice. So it's not going to be a one day event. Anybody who's telling you that, you know, it's going to be a one day blow off top, that, that doesn't work that way, especially uh, not in the euphoric market like this. But just so start, you know, keeping kind of a journal, uh, start looking at indexes, start looking uh, at individual names when they start getting tired. They just can't rally anymore with the futures. At least then you'll start getting an inclination of maybe something's potentially going to happen. But keep this in mind, guys. For all you guys who didn't participate on the short side in 2022, you know, the whole cash is a position, right? And those people who were shorting the market or not buying the market in 2023 because they didn't believe the rally was real. And now that these are the same people in 2024, I'm all in, right? I'm all in at any price. And the price action right now is is paying those people who are all in, but eventually it's going to end just like every other bear market, bull market run. But just be happy, be enjoy this move. Maybe it lasts for another couple of weeks, maybe it lasts for another couple of days. But the point is enjoy it because when it does uh, finally gas out and the bulls just get tired, right? When the buyers get tired, it will give us an absolutely epic uh, backside uh, trade. So that's uh, that's that. Other than that, let's talk about individual names. Uh, for, you know, there's no reason uh, to you know, to cover the indexes. They're all up. They're all closing at highs, right? Uh, and the, the market closed uh, the week incredibly strong. I think the Nasdaq was up. I know the Dow was down. Uh, again, nobody cares about the Dow. At least I don't. Uh, Nasdaq closed uh, on Friday up another 200 points or one point uh, two percent. Just an absolute astonishing rally. And these are the fine, kind of the fire, uh, fine points uh, we got out of the week. Uh, let's start off with Microsoft. We talked about Microsoft all week, uh, busting off recent highs. They confirmed the 415.30s level. Anyway, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Really, really big explosion. Uh, Amazon, we talked about, you know, it was just imminent, right? It was just a matter of time uh, that it was going to wake up from its earnings kind of little distribution channel. It did that on Friday. NVIDIA is... Closed at $2,000 a share. Okay, I woke some of you guys up. Obviously, it's sarcasm, but is it really, right? The stock is $720 a share, just an absolute uh, rock star. Again, nobody knows when this uh, gravy chain is going to run out. They do come out with earnings, uh, I believe, on February the 21st. Again, the question is, we'll cover this a little bit closer towards its earnings release. Is it priced in, right? Is it priced in? We'll know. We'll know very, very quickly. On its earnings day, um, you know, names like, for example, let me see, names, for example, like um, like AMD. You know, AMD is very, very close uh, to busting out, confirming this 10-day moving average. The one enigma, and, and it's, a, it's a little bit interesting here, is Meta, right? So as we talked about last week, it was just a matter of time that Amazon and Meta we're going to wake up through, for, you know, from their earnings uh, distribution, right? And Amazon did. Amazon had a really, really strong move on Friday, but Meta didn't. And Meta didn't participate in the last three, four days uh, of the week. And the question is, well, what the hell is going on there, right? It's a rhetorical question. Nobody knows anything, obviously. Um, you know, there's a whole theory. Maybe Zuck is selling stock, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they did come out with their first uh, dividend distribution on their er earnings call I want to give Meta the benefit of the doubt this week. Okay, maybe just maybe they were just trying to clear up a seller. Whatever the case may be, we don't know. I'm going to give Meta the benefit of the doubt this week. I'm going to give it a couple more days to see if it could finally wake up and test those earnings highs. Because again, if you see, for example, Amazon, when Amazon broke its earnings highs, it absolutely exploded. So we're kind of watching for the same trade of Meta. I'm still waiting, right? I'm a very patient man. Uh, that's one of the you know one of the great attributes I do have is a lot of patience, but I tell you, man, the longer it cannot wake up for a second run, the higher probability it loses the five-day moving average, like we talked about a couple of videos ago. I will be ready on both sides, but I, but I definitely want to give uh, Meta the benefit of the doubt uh, this week, it, see if it could finally uh, wake up. Is everything exploding? No, not everything exploding. Uh, if you look at Tesla, if you, remember, if you guys remember uh, Monday's video we talked about, it was actually literally uh, the title of the video, you know, Tesla put in uh, a short-term uh, a short-term bottom but just because again you put in an inverted hammer 
And look, is this the smoothest move up, right? The stock has gone from, you know, 175 to 194, and it looks great on paper. Uh, for all of us who trade Tesla on a day-to-day -day basis, we're not getting those $4 or $5 moves, right? We'll get to the pivots in a second. We're getting a dollar, two dollar moves on this move. Again, it's a sloppy move up, but it is a move up. And obviously, uh, the channel here at the end of January is going to be a big number for a potential more of extended run if the market continues uh, to give that extended run. Uh, but again, not the prettiest, not the easiest thing, but a dollar, two dollars, you know, we'll take it. We'll always take it per uh, per move. Uh, like I said, A and D again, very very close. It needs to reclaim back the the ten day moving average. Again, if you guys have been watching these videos for years, you kind of know the 10-day uh, moving average uh, is the birth of the trade for me. So we're watching for a really good confirmation on AMD this week. If they could reclaim back uh, the 10-day, it gave us a trade on Friday, but not necessarily. It was already so overextended for, for that candle. It kind of lost a little bit of juice, but we're still definitely watching uh, AMD this week. The one that, that could really be good this week, just because where it is on the formation is Apple, right? If you guys notice, every stock that kind of disappointed on earnings, Microsoft, Google, right? They all kind of reclaimed back their supply zones and rallied. Apple is the last one underneath the 50-day. Here's the key, and this is why I'm saying this could potentially be the best value for technology for this week. If Apple, other than Meta, if it wakes up, obviously, but if Apple can reclaim back, if you guys notice on February the 7th, it got rejected off the 50-day moving average, the same way it got rejected off the 50-day moving average on January the 30th and never, it just never went back up. If it could reclaim back the, the high from three days ago and reclaim back the 50-day moving average, Apple could start waking up. Because if you guys see right here, the last time Apple reclaimed its 50-day moving average was January 18th, and we went on a run from 189 to 196 in five days. So I'm definitely, definitely watching Apple this week. Any close above the 50-day moving average is a really aggressive uh, buy signal, especially in this uh, type of a runaway market. Another group that's been really strong, was starting to get really strong, is the AI group. Obviously, NVIDIA has been uh, the poster boy for really, really strong moves. But look at AI. AI really had a big move on Friday, right? Came out of this range extremely well. This thing is very close. I mean, really, really close to busting this whole January formation and reclaiming back the 200-day SMA. That's a biggie right there, right? That's a biggie. We want to watch this thing this week. It doesn't necessarily have to happen Monday or Tuesday. But guys, set alerts. Set alerts for AI. If it can reclaim back the 200-day moving average, again, look at the last time it reclaimed the 200-day moving average. Uh, back in December, the stock literally went from 29 all the way up to 34, right? So again, these levels are huge, folks. And again, it has nothing to do about the PS60 theory. These are just basic levels of technical analysis. No matter how you trade, they're going to be very, very important in your in your journey. So I'm definitely watching AI this week. Look at another name. I believe Path is also in the AI space, right? Big, big, juicy setup here. Really, really close to busting out. Keep an eye on this thing this, this week because this thing starts building above Friday's channel, this thing can wake up as well. So we're, we're definitely set up for this week. There's a lot of juicy setups uh, still out there. And the key is, again, just take it day by day, take it trade by trade. Don't try to predict where things are going to be a month from now or a year from now. Just take it one day at a time. The easiest way not to get pulled, right? Not to get run over by the, that truck uh, that you don't see coming is take it day by day. Two other names uh, I want to you know, talk about really, really quickly before we get to Friday's pivots are Disney, right? Disney had a great quarter inside day on Friday on little less than half the volume. Watch this thing this week, guys. The same trade as Amazon and the same trade that I'm waiting for uh, on, on Meta. But again, had a big move into earnings. Now let's see how long the distribution is going to be. Probably the best bet is probably one or two more days of going sideways and then waking up. And the second one, watch this week, is ARM, right? Well, I'm, you know, and obviously we're gonna look for a weakness into rising daily support to get some of those names as well. But ARM is the same thing as uh, Disney, had a great quarter, you know, had an inside day. Let's watch this thing for, for this week. Let it go sideways a little bit for a potential another explosion. So that's it, some great setups uh, on tap for this week. And again, for all you guys who are joining us, guys, just click the link below. It'll give you a 30-day trial. 
uh, to the PS60 theory, again, it is, we're the only ones on the planet who trade these pivots this specific way. Unfortunately, you can't find it on YouTube. You can't find it from somebody else. Uh, this is a very, very proprietary way of trading. And we found a little bit of an arbitrage within these, within these channels that give this a very, very specific little edge. So again, if you are interested, guys, I look forward to meeting you guys uh, on uh, on Monday, right? So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the pivots uh, again. Uh, Amazon 172.50 earnings highs needs to build. Here was Amazon uh, took out the earnings highs and just absolutely went nuts. Went to 75. This thing starts getting above 75. This thing's gonna go more. They started buying for the 180s uh, for March and April. Really good looking uh, trade there. Meta again didn't go. Just didn't go here. Watching Meta. Uh, Tesla, nice little pop on Tesla, but again, it's my whole point, a dollar or two, nothing big here. 191.61 uh, needs to build. Here was Tesla, took out the 191.61, traded into the 94s. Again, it's just stone throws away from starting to fill in this uh, January or December gap. So it's gonna be very, very interesting to see if it could start confirming that. But listen, a couple of bucks is still a couple of bucks. Uh, NET never got to uh, pre-market highs, another earnings name. Uh, Microsoft went nuts. Uh, 415.60 needs to build. Here's Microsoft. Took out the 415.60. Traded all the way up to almost 421. This thing looks higher as well. A uh, nice little pop. You know, I traded AMD. Nice little pop. I think it was a little overextended, but uh, 173.88 huge area needs to build. It popped into, so it took out the sole 73.88 level. It popped into the 75s before it completely reversed course, but it's still. This is the highest close in the whole formation. It just needs to now confirm the 10-day moving average. And I believe that is it. I believe that is it. Yeah, the, I believe that is it. Everything else we talked about throughout the week, you know, Carvana had a really, really big push. Um, I forgot what other names we, we, you know, we discussed. But again, it's a really good market. It's a very good market. Again, guys, enjoy it. It's not going to last forever. Uh, we're going to be super prepared. Uh, for the potential rounding top whenever it comes. It will come eventually. We just don't know when. Uh, but we, we, I do know the signs. I can recognize the signs a mile away because I've been getting caught in those signs for the first 10 to 15 years of my career and going on year 25. And my uh, 25th anniversary is slowly approaching. So I'm kind of, kind of just really taking a step back to really appreciate how long the journey was. But it has been a journey and everything else that I went through uh, it was all worth it, right? It was all worth it at the end. So, guys, have a great weekend, everybody. God bless. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, have a lovely, lovely Sunday. And with God's help, I will see you all in the field on Monday. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend.